Welcome to the last set news. Take a top stories in crypto and bring it on to bite sized pieces. Today, just as the thumbnail suggests, these are the days when all the money is made in crypto and, and more to the point, really investing. So, we're going to talk about the days like today. We're going to take a look at a little bit of history as far as like the crypto and the internet. We're going to talk about 300 trillion market cap. We're going to talk about exit taxes. And finally, we're going to talk about uh, a cryptocurrency called uh, WAX that uh, Crypto Stash had brought up to me. There's a great story about where they're going. So we'll go over all those things. At first, take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it's Monday, and uh, it's Monday. Uh, nothing really going on. It's very, uh, very boring. We'll just say that. Market cap is around 2.82 trillion, 2.9, somewhere around there, fluctuating. We've gone below the 3 trillion market cap, but what are you going to do? Bitcoin price is still at 64.2. I'm pretty happy about that. Sentiment is neutral. Average daily sentiment is neutral. There's nobody really that's up massively except for, if you take a look here, uh, you see Wax uh, as far as hottest on Twitter and also the top price gainers. Uh, number five is Wax, and I'm going to talk about why that is. But besides that, it's super boring today. I mean, it's just, it's just, there's not a lot going on. And of course, people will say, well, in this project, this big thing's going on, that thing. But in all reality, as far as like price action, it's pretty boring. And as far as investors go, this is when a lot of people lose focus because they're just like, meh, whatever. And uh, I think that's a big mistake, and I'll explain why. But also, you have to also take a look at uh, what's going on as far as on-chain analysis, and also take a look at what's going on in the market in general. So if we take a look here, this is from uh, Bybit or BYBT, which is now called Coinglass.com, just so you know. I'll link this in the description. But uh, you got their, your Bitcoin long to short ratios. And over the last 24 hours, it's pretty much a dead heat between who's taking out the longs and who's taking out the shorts. But just so you know, that is... Uh, things start to really heat up in the Bitcoin market, the Bitcoin crypto market. People are going to start to take a lot of long positions because like, yeah, it's going to go up forever. And uh, that looks very attractive to people who want to short it. So the, the higher that you see these longs come about, just know that the chances of uh, shorting it is very enticing to people who want to make a quick uh, you know, billion or whatever they're going to do. Also, if, if we don't take a look back and say, what's been the last, last four hours? Yeah, shorts a little bit more. Last 30 minutes, eh, so on and so forth. Man, BitMEX. People are going long like crazy, 62.4%. What the heck? What else we got? Dairy Bit, 58% are going long. Again, just be careful with those longs and shorts. Also, if we take a look at like on-chain analysis, and uh, I just had uh, Ki Young Ju, who's the CEO of CryptoQuant on uh, a couple of days ago, and we, and we did an in-depth um, uh, training session on on-chain analysis, which will be released uh, either today or tomorrow. It's fascinating. The guy's a genius. But uh, here's my favorite charts. Uh, miners outflow. So just so you know, if we're taking a look at price action, if miners start to like buy or sell a bunch, usually you see a big dip, right? But lately, they haven't really sold anything because they're expecting what we're all expecting. Pretty big price action just hasn't really happened right now. Uh, as far as Bitcoin exchange reserves, uh, Bitcoin continues to fall off uh, of the uh, uh, exchanges, meaning that people are taking it off the reserves. They're holding it. They're not going to sell it. That's a good sign, but not as big as a sign as if you take a look at Ethereum. Look at Ethereum, the exchange reserve over the last year. Look at how much it has fallen. Just people taking things off either to, to buy metaverse plays, to mint NFTs, to get into DeFi, to even stake Ethereum. I mean... And then also the fact that because of the London hard fork, they're burning more Ethereum uh, than they're actually minting, which means uh, it's actually a deflationary uh, crypto, uh, truly. So Ethereum is going to, I think I was wrong in my assessment of Ethereum. I mean, I, I thought 10,000 could go higher than that. I'm not going to say how much because it would sound ridiculous, but uh, probably higher than 10,000 this bull run. Also, uh, I'll exchange taker buy volume. All this means is, and Key had to explain this to me, all this really means is that uh, as, as things start to dip, you see a bunch of whales come in and start to push the price up, like right here. Uh, whoops, let me put that in. They, they push the price up, that little uh, purple thing there, and they say, no, we don't we don't want it to fall. It pushes it up, push it up. And then over here, see where it kind of comes down a little bit? It pushes it up again. So again, there's a lot of money sloshing around, and people really want uh, Bitcoin, essentially, to be big. And then also, this is another great one to look at all exchanges estimated leverage ratio. Once you get to around two, it gets kind of dangerous because that means that people are leveraging like crazy and uh, it's called over leveraging. We can see right here, once it gets around two, it's uh, pretty dicey. And that just happened on the 7th of November, 0 0.19, 0 0.19, 0 0.19, 0 0.19, 0 0.19, 0 0.19, 0 0.19, 0 0.19, 0 0.19, 0 0.19, 0 0.19, 0 0.19
0.8. Today, 0.193. It's uh, not all-time highs, but pretty darn high for us to expect some volatility, although uh, it hasn't really happened yet. And this one, market value to realized value, I'll let Key explain that one in our video. So that's what's going on as far as on-chain analysis. And that just kind of leads me to where this whole video goes to, which is days like today. Days like today are boring. And they look like this. And nobody really cares because like, ugh, I don't, there's no really action going on. So why do I really do anything? But this is when you really want to do everything. Because these are the things when, when things are moving sideways. So this is not financial advice, it's financial opinion. But for me, when I look at these days, I'm like, you know what? This is the day to actually put some in. I mean, it's even great to do it with uh, during the dips, but when you're moving sideways, there's really not too much uh, that you kind of really think about and go, well, maybe this could uh, go this way or that way. Hey, it's moving sideways, so it's not like you're gonna take like like huge huge off the table. Uh, you can always wait for dips, but to me, this is when I made pretty much all my gains uh, in 2018 and 2019 when everything just bottomed out and was moving sideways, it gave me a lot of time just to accumulate. And these are the times that I think investors, when they look at it, they should really be excited. So when I take a look at this, again, a lot of people will be like, I don't, this is, I'm not gonna do anything because it's not going parabolic and it's not really going up. So for uh, for some of you who've watched the channel, you know that this these are the days I always talk about. These are the days to get uh, excited about. And for you that are new, it's just a refresher that, yeah, things are moving sideways and it is boring and you probably don't want to do anything because you're like, who cares? It's not really going parabolic right now, so I'll get in later. That's the wrong time. See, the investors know, at least the smart money, somewhat smart money says, you know what? When things are moving sideways, this is when I really want to get in, which leads me to uh, my next point because... As things are moving sideways, you have to understand that there's a lot of great things going on. If we can do like a little comparison, this was a great chart from crypto.com. And it took a look at the acceleration between internet users and crypto users as far as adoption. And you can see right here in the green is the internet users, that's in millions. And then the blue is the crypto users. And see how it matches up perfectly with the trajectory of where things are going. So imagine this. Right now, I mean, we're under a billion people uh, using cryptocurrency. The world economy is like our world economy. The global population is around 7.7 .7 billion, I think, somewhere around there. So correct me in the comments. But once we start to get that critical mass of around a billion people, I mean, that's a lot of people into crypto and digital asset to really ex accept it. That's what we call mass adoption, my friends. And when we're kind of going in that trajectory, we're looking at like two, two and a half years out because I mean, it's kind of parallel with exactly what's going on. So the thing that I always think about here is if that's happening, like even though we're below 3 trillion right now, look, four short years ago, um, 1 trillion market cap was ridiculous to even think about. And now here we are at 3 trillion. So is it unlikely to think about in the next two, three, four years? Uh, we could be at a, I don't know, 50, 30 trillion, 50 trillion, 100 trillion. I mean, why not? Because everything's going to be tokenized. And, and we know that uh, a lot of institutions are here. We know that banks are actually getting in. We know that they're actually sovereign nations getting in. Heck, we even know that there's a thing called city coins. Places like Miami and Austin and New York City are putting things on the blockchain as far as being able to gain yield from Bitcoin smart contracts, uh, stacks and taproot and things like that. So this is out of the side of the realm of possibility that the things that we're talking about right now can truly explode the stratosphere. I mean, if we think, if we like to look at uh, something like this, it makes a lot of sense. And that also leads me to another point, which is Raul Powell. And Raul Powell thinks, Raul Powell, if you don't know, uh, he was Goldman Sachs guy. He's been all over the internet's uh, real vision. And he talks about, this is an old one. This is in uh, March 7th. And he, he says, look, he goes, right now, we're at 1.7 trillion. That was in March, remind you. We've doubled. We were well, almost doubled, around 3 trillion. He says, this it's not going to be like this today. He goes, you can fight it. You can do whatever else. But he says, this is a multi-hundred trillion dollar ecosystem eventually. So what he was really saying in the last interview that he gave, he says, look, within the next 10 years, it's going to be 300 trillion dollars 300 trillion dollars i know you think to yourself that's ridiculous how could that possibly happen well let me take a look at this
I know people always groan when I pull this up because like we've seen this before, but for you who are new, it's an, it's great to see. It's also a great refresher. These little dots, these little squares, that's a hundred billion. So silver is even one. It's at 43 billion. And this was in 2020. So just so you know, uh, cryptocurrency was only at 244 billion. <laughs> 244 billion. This was May 27th, 2020. Go figure. Here's military spending, coins and banknotes, Fed's balance sheet. There's billionaires. Look at that. Totally dwarfed the whole market cap of crypto. Here's gold that are almost $11 trillion. I don't understand that. I own gold and silver, so don't hate me, gold bugs. Fortune 500 companies killing it. Stock market is at $100 trillion now. It was at $90 trillion back then. Here's the money supply. I know that went up. Here's global debt at $253 trillion. Here's global real estate at almost $300 trillion. Here's global wealth at $360 trillion. Here's derivatives. And you can take a look at all these things uh, as far as like you were starting at 11.6 trillion, but really it's maybe 550 trillion. You're talking about futures, options, warrants, swaps. And then that's just the things that we know about, but it really could be up to one quadrillion dollars. So when I talk about these things and we're, and, and we're seeing here like 300 trillion, that's ridiculous. Is it? Is it really? Which leads me to my next points, which is this. Exit and taxes and all the awful things you got to think about. So this was my original... Uh, exit strategy and it's it's changed a little bit because I'm not really going to be selling a lot of crypto I'm going to be uh, making loans against it uh, through Celsius Celsius is a great platform uh, I've used it in the past I've used it for one of our condos here in uh, Puerto Rico for short-term rentals worked out great a lot better than the banks and so you just so you know like I think well okay I'll put five percent in cash makes sense 25 percent in usdc why usdc it's because of the same thing that you got somebody like mr wonderful kevin o'leary talked about today he goes look he goes i'm staking usdc in this video he talks about how it's like four or no i think say like between four and and five point something percent i'm like what are you talking about on voyager it's like almost 11 percent and celsius i think it's even higher than that so i don't know where he's going probably block five with this boy uh pompliano anyhow so that is what I'm going to do, 25%. Just stick on USDC stable coins. 5% is Masterworks because it is a it is an asymmetrical uh, or it is um, it is not it's an uncorrelated asset to everything else. Because guess what, rich people like to do? They don't care how the economy is really doing so much per se, but they want those paintings. And you can get fractionalized share of Masterworks and just kind of protects me. 15% of land, 20% in houses, 10% of my Amazon business. 15% in staking more uh, as far as the cryptos. And then the next one is I trust IRA. And why? Because I'm not going to pay any taxes on that one. So when we talk about that, the, the thing that people ask me is, well, why do I trust? Well, it's because like this. The way that Peter Thiel made $5 billion was through a Roth IRA. Let me say that again. The way that Peter Thiel made $5 billion and he, even put on the, and he only put in $2,000 in 1999 was through a Roth IRA. Roth IRAs, whatever they accumulate to, you pay this much in taxes. Zero, bubkiss, nothing. It's pre-tax or post-tax, excuse me. So this is how it happened. His account jumped more than $3 billion in just three years, even though he didn't contribute money to his Roth after 99. How did he do it? Well, he's a PayPal founder. He put shares, of, a ton of shares in uh, PayPal, which was 0.001 stuck them all in the Roth IRA and they accumulated to $5 billion. And uh, he doesn't have to pay a red cent because it was just all accumulation. He's like, hey, that's, that's the rules, baby. That's just how I play. The same thing goes for crypto. So when we talk about 300 trillion, 500 trillion, whatever else, uh, potentially, think of that this way. Do you really want to pay 20%, 25% or whatever else it is to wherever you're at, especially in America? Probably not something that you want to do. So what I want to just... As a refresher, uh, I trust and Masterworks. I trust. I'm talking about them today because there's a big announcement, which is this. There is a link in the description. Looks just like this. And when you click on that link and you sign up for I trust, you get $100 in Bitcoin. Oh, and also, guess what? The $29.99, $29.99 fee per month Ed, is now zero. There are no monthly fees for your I trust IRA. Now, you do pay 1% in trade fee. That's better than uh, Coinbase. And then, of course, you want to get gold or silver. And they have a slew of different cryptos that you can get into as far as I trust. So 
Again, links in the description. I even did a video, which is a walkthrough of like how it all works, why you want uh, an, a Roth IRA between a SEP and a traditional. I'll link that in the description as well. Looks just like this. And on top of that, if you want to learn more about Masterworks, there's also a link in the description, but I did a video on that one, which talked about why I am personally involved in putting 5% of my portfolio into these multi-million dollar pieces of art. Guess what? I know nothing about art. Masterworks does, and I let them do the hard work because I'm an idiot. And then uh, again, if you use the link, you can skip the wait list. So that is essentially what is going on. And then exit and taxes, it's up to you. This is not investment uh, advice, just investment opinion. That's what's going on. And uh, that's it for that section. Now let's go into some, I think, pretty interesting stuff, which is wax. And uh, there was an article today. It says top companies Hasbro, Funko, and Mattel turned to wax as a trusted partner. I would have skipped over this, quite honestly, uh, a week ago. But if it wasn't for this video that I did with Crypto Stash, where he talked about specifically wax and how much uh, NFTs are being minted on it, it's almost, it's the second largest blockchain right behind Ethereum and how undervalued it is. I would have just blown over it. But just so you knew, uh, wax signed a great deal. Uh, they were already a trusted partner uh, with uh, intellectual properties like Saw, The Princess Bride, Blade Runner, already had multiple massive ex successful NFT drops for Tops, And this week's upcoming launch of the Mattel Hot Wheels NFT garage line completes the trifecta. And then um, that's pretty much the whole thing. The rest of it gets kind of boring. So this is essentially what's going on as far as like with wax. And uh, just so you know, it's one of the ones that's gone up like 25% in a day because I think there's some uh, pretty big things happening, such as this. And that is all for today. So look, a lot of information going on. I know it's not a very sexy day, but it is what it is. So look, if you uh, if you made it all the way in, first, thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And that's it. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.